Today we're going to hear from Malachi 4, but before we do, let's pray. Father God, I pray that you would speak to us through your words, that our minds would somehow understand your great mysteries and your wonderful power. So be with us as we hear these words this morning. Amen. Malachi 4 says this, Surely the day is coming. It will burn like a furnace. All the arrogant and every evil doer will be stubble. And that day that is coming will be set them on fire, says the Lord Almighty. Not a root or a branch will be left to them. But for you who revere my name, the sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its rays. And you will go out and frolic like well-fed calves. Then you will trample on the wicked and they will be ashes under your souls, of your feet. On the day when I act, says the Lord of God Almighty. Remember the law, my servant Moses, and the decrees of the law. I gave to the Herod of all Israel. See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the parents of their children and the hearts of the children to their parents. All else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. So this is a warning given to the prophet of warning what is coming, what will be done to those that do not follow God Almighty. The interesting thing is Malachi 4 is the last of the Old Testament. Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament and you could say it's a new beginning which is interesting because the Hebrews had an interesting way of writing. We tend to write with a beginning, a middle and an end. But the Hebrews wrote with a beginning, a middle and a new beginning. And God speaking here to Malachi was saying there is a new beginning. There is something coming and I want you to believe. But those who don't believe, they will be sorry. This was the coming of Jesus Christ to this world. But the interesting thing is that after Malachi had these words, the Israelites never heard from God for 400 years. They had to wait 400 years before the coming of Jesus Christ. It's thought that maybe God wasn't speaking to them. But my thoughts are that they weren't listening. Because I believe that God always speaks to us. He's omnipresent. We have a choice whether we listen to him. It's interesting that we live in a world at the moment in fear through the virus. And many are crying out to God. Where are you? Help us. And I'm sure many would say and have heard people say, he's not listening. But again, I believe he's talking, but we're not listening. So as we hear these words of warning to the prophet of what would happen to those that do not believe and the joy of those that do believe. We can only give that message to those that don't know. 
we can only give that hope to those that have given up. Give that joy of Christmas to those that are lonely, those that are real, those that are suffering. Most people would gratefully have you pray for them. So this Advent, pick someone to pray for. Find someone that you know needs a little hope. A little joy. And just a smile. A friendly voice. We know we can't touch anybody. Can't get too close to them. But that doesn't stop us praying for them. That doesn't stop us giving them the joy, the love of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father God, I pray, help us be bold this Advent. Help us to be bold, that we would find someone to pray for, that we would see someone that just needs hope. See someone that just needs you. Amen. Oh,